today on Dr. Zoe. Aging, a beauty blogger's worst nightmare. But can something as simple as our phones and laptops really promote the onset of older looking skin? We'll be talking about this and more on Dr. Zoe. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Dr. Zoe Show. We have a very interesting case study to go through today, but first of all, let me ask all of you. How many of you guys use a cell phone or a laptop on a regular basis? Okay, pretty much all of you. How many of you guys go outside on a regular basis? Okay, far less of you, but still a good chunk of you all. What if I told you that those laptops and those cell phones and even go outside on a regular basis can cause your skin to age at an accelerated rate? Okay, everyone, calm down, relax, don't fret too much. We'll go into all the specifics later on the show. But first, let's give a warm welcome to my two guests here today, Ms. Ren Coles, who has noticed accelerated signs of skin aging, as well as Dr. Durr, who happens to be a dermatologist and will help us shed light on today's topic. Hi, Dr. Zoe. It's true. So ever since I started using my laptop and my cell phone for a long period of time, I've noticed my skin feeling very odd and just old in general. So I want to know what's happening to my skin. So Dr. Durham, do you think you could shed some light on this issue? Well, first off, thank you for having me. But to answer your question specifically, the devices we use, like our laptops and our cell phones, they emit a type of light called blue light. And so you can actually see a blue hue coming off of the screen. So, to start off, it's best to picture the light we see as a rainbow, Roy G. Biv. These are all the colors we can see and therefore they are called visible light. Visible light, like other energies, travels in the form of waves. The higher the energy of a wave, the shorter its wavelength will be. We can think of the inner colors of the rainbow, such as blue, indigo, and violet, as having a higher amount of energy and shorter wavelength when compared to the other colors. Blue light has a wavelength of about 380 to 500 nanometers in the visible light spectrum. It is actually one of the shortest, highest energy wavelengths of visible light. And interestingly enough, a lot of our devices that we use currently, like our laptops, tablets, TV screens, smartphones, they emit this specific type of radiation, blue light radiation, and we are exposed to it continuously. Well, I recently read an article that said blue light exposure can cause hyperpigmentation and significantly accelerate the onset of aging. So, is there even a connection? Yeah, so blue light actually does play a role in how early the aging symptoms can appear, um, but we can go into the specifics of that. There have been some significant studies conducted on this subject that explore the relationship between blue light and the onset of aging symptoms. This particular study looked at the impact of UVB light, red light, and blue-violet light on pigmentation or skin color. Healthy human volunteers were exposed to increasing doses of these particular lights to determine if these lights tested would cause hyperpigmentation or excessive pigmentation of the skin, a common symptom of aging. Analysis showed a clear dose effect with the blue-violet light producing increased pigmentation with increasing intensities, whereas the red light did not induce hyperpigmentation. Also, when compared to UVB radiation, the blue-violet light induced significantly more hyperpigmentation that lasted up to three months. This study suggests that there is a link between blue light exposure and the appearance of hyperpigmentation or age spots. However, it is important to consider that this research study exposed the volunteers to a significantly higher intensity of blue light at 150 joules per square centimeter than might be produced by your phone or other electronic screens. So the effects may vary between individuals based on this and the exposure duration. So this does suggest that blue light plays a role in stimulating the aging process, but there are other factors to consider. For instance, the amount of time that you spend in front of the screen or how far you are away from them, as well as how much time you spend in the sun, uh, your, your diet, and even genetics play a role. Okay, Dr. So, so what are some ways that I can protect myself from blue light exposure? Well, there are a lot of things you can do in order to protect yourself from overexposure to blue light. You can buy devices that emit less blue light in the first place. You can buy certain filters from your local technology store that filter out a lot of this blue light. In the same way, you can download certain apps that have this filtering effect. Other ways is to enrich your diet with antioxidants, or you can even apply a little bit of sunscreen before using such devices. 
Well, thank you both for answering my questions. I learned a lot and I'll be keeping all these things in my mind the next time I use my cell phone. Alright everyone, that was a great show. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you all learned something new today and see you all next week. If you guys enjoyed today's content, make sure to subscribe to the Demystifying Medicine YouTube page. Thanks for watching!